Are you bored of storyboarding with boring apps from sordid money hoarders? Well, Affinity won't leave you an amputee like others with their arm and a leg monthly fee. I've been kicking the tires of Affinity Designer for a few weeks now, and I've been liking how it's working. And uh, I figured it's about time to do some real client work with it. So uh, I created this storyboard using Affinity Designer from start to finish. And I was pleasantly surprised. It works quite well. So I just want to share some techniques that I learned for creating fast and efficient storyboard templates. So we start off by creating a new document that's 1920 by 1080 at 72 DPI. And I hit this artboard tool and click this button here, artboard. And now I've got a new artboard that matches the exact dimensions and uh, of my document. So I wanna create a rectangle, but I need to have, you can see your artboard is still selected. I need to deselect that. Even if I click on this tool, the artboard is still selected. So I'm gonna click on the arrow and click out in the margin here. And I've deselected my artboard. And this is important for this next step because I want to click on one corner and drag to the next. And if I had my artboard still uh, selected, it would scale it down instead of drawing the rectangle that I want. Um, so, and I'm just doing this so I can get the right aspect ratio in this rectangle. So find the upper left-hand corner, snapping is on. You'll, you'll feel it snap or you'll see it snap. And uh, it's a visual feel, if that makes sense. And now I've got a rectangle. That's the exact 16 by nine, um, aspect ratio and uh, I could scale it down now. So drag one corner and make sure you hold on shift because if you don't, you're gonna ruin all that work that we just did to get to this point. And uh, yeah, so about that will work. Now I don't wanna fill, I don't need a fill. So I'll click this, turn it off. And I wanna look at the stroke. So let's make the stroke a bit bigger here and let's move this now and uh, i'll move it uh, i'm just going to kind of eyeball it but i know i don't need too much room at the top so I'll put it up and give myself a decent margin over here now if i hold on alt and drag and hold on shift i can move this over one thing you'll notice is i think in illustrator if you had a shape with no fill you had to click right on the stroke to get it to move but i can click anywhere i've got I got no fill, but I could click to select it and drag it. Um, and I could click on the line or I could click inside, which is, it doesn't seem like much, but that was a big annoying thing in Illustrator. And um, also I should mention, I've changed some of my preferences so that, that I don't have to completely uh, encapsulate or surround my shape to select it. I could actually do like a partial and it works that way. Uh, so this is a big thing that I found out. If you go to edit preferences, it was just driving me crazy because I wasn't used to it. Uh, tools, is it? Yeah, this is off by default. So when that's the case, you'll probably have something like this unless you change it. When that's the case, if I do a partial selection, it doesn't work. I would have to left click, drag, and then right click, and then release left click, and then it selects, but I want the opposite that of that. So I go to edit preferences and tools, check this. And now if you're an um, Illustrator user, you'll be more familiar with this selectability. So you still have, it basically flip flops. So if I want to not get partial selections, I mouse over this whole left rectangle that I want. And then if I'm over this one by accident, I could just right click release left click and you can see I've only got my full selection and uh, yeah so let's let's move on with it and so we select these two I'll hold down alt and drag down and hold down shift and uh, something like that is probably good so now I've got these all um, all together here and um, I'm gonna merge them together so actually, I'm gonna group them together. So I select them all, select the top one, shift click the bottom one, right click, group. Now we've got them as a group. Let's double click to name it. Uh, so our frames. So we got frames. Let's throw some placeholder text boxes in there. Click and hold over this icon. If you see this A, make sure you got this text frame tool. 
and then we just kind of go somewhere about here and drag out to somewhere about here and um, let's double click this arrow here and change it to I don't know 24 text so this is our placeholder and you just kind of copy and paste your script here and I'm alt dragging again so selecting these two holding alt dragging down while holding down shift and uh, we've got our frames we've got our text now let's um, well let's group these together also control G and uh, double click on it name it text so the good thing about groups is if I let's say I, I select the frame layer or, or some other layer I can click on one of these objects it selects the group double click on one of these objects it selects that object within the group and then triple click it'll select my text and then I could just paste in whatever the actual text needs to be so smart people that made this program very organized because we could just collapse this and not have to worry about looking at four extra layers uh, but it is still easy to select and get to exactly what you need and uh, okay so let's go to the next step which is to um, create a pixel layer and in this pixel layer we're gonna call this this will be our drawings and we could put it below the frames I know if it's here it's gonna put it inside the frame group if I drag it further down or if I drag it yeah all the way down and it's it's below and I see that it's in its own separate layer and if, and if we see that it's not on the artboard we just drag it up here and okay so it is in here and let's try let's try this okay yeah so that that's how, that's how it works if if you knew uh, how to use the software that's what you do the first time and so you just click and drag um, so I see if I go here it's outside of the artboard if I go here it puts it inside the uh, the frames group but if I go right like this then that's option number three and that just puts it below the frame group okay so the uh, what we want to do now is create a mask and I want to put it on the drawing board but I want to use my frames layer so I'm gonna select the frames group and I'm gonna go into I don't have any selection tools here so I have to go click this button to get into my pixel persona and I'll click on this uh, selection brush and uh, I see that I'm not getting the selection that I want it just kind of like a random look and uh, let's right click and go to rasterize and that'll collapse the frames into one group and now you could see okay as one unified pixel layer now this tool works how I would want it to and uh, yeah so I got the selection from here and I'll go into my drawings layer and hit my mask button using that selection and now you'll see we've got a mask based on the selection and let's just test it out here so and you could see that it gives you like this collapse thing where it gives you the mask on this layer and then the drawing here and you could collapse that you could press control D to deselect and you can see as I draw in here I'm just drawing within my frames and uh, probably don't want to draw that darkly so this is not this is not a uh, drawing tutorial but this is how we would set up the template and uh, and yeah my, my drawings layer is good I like to have one more layer one more pixel layer click this button here I'm gonna put it on top of at least the text maybe also the frames and I'm gonna call this one uh, my notes and so now I have a, a notes layer which I can draw on top of everything and I would do like my one a to uh, actually if you have one a you have to have one B right uh, just the law of alphabets and um, yeah but I also want to have uh, a specific color for this one so I'm gonna go to effects and turn on color overlay so define color overlay turn it on 
I'm gonna make this um, a light blue, or um, maybe that's not light enough. Something unobtrusive, and uh, I think the light blue will, will work. And let's go back to layers. So now uh, this is our layer here. If you also want, you could add, um, not there. I mean, you could add a blend mode if you wanted to, but you could drop the opacity down. And so just something that, that makes it a little bit lighter, uh, but it's really, it's really up to you. You could leave it at 100 and just use a lighter color. The nice thing about um, this is instead of having to go to effects, layers, effects, change stuff, uh, you got this little FX icon and I could double click on that and I could quickly get to my effect. Let's say you want it even lighter blue. Go here, close that. So that just saves you from having to go back and forth between tabs and now we just got a lighter blue. Okay, that is pretty much it for um, setting things up. So you just have to remember, uh, you might wanna lock some of this stuff. If I, if I lock my text group, just note that I can't select the text group and if you want to get back to it, you can just um, unlock it when you're ready to, to change your text. You could do the same thing with frames. Probably you're never, once you've got this set up, you're never really going to need to mess with frames. So I probably would just lock this for the duration. And uh, we've got artboard one. If I double click it, I can name it page one or just one. So this is basically our template. And then all we need to do is select this layer so if we want page two, we can select this artboard, right click on it, go to duplicate. And uh, now we got another one or just select it, press control J is a really nice keyboard shortcut. So now we've got uh, layer one, this we'll call two. And uh, we, we have the artboard selected. So we could just hold down shift and click and drag it down. And you'll see that We've got everything we had in one, we have it also in two, and, uh, and you just keep going in that fashion. Select this one, control J, double click, call it three. And you might be thinking, it looks like you're going backwards here. Obviously you, you want your, um, you want your artboards to start with one, two, and three, but one, two, and three go this direction. And that's just for export purposes. Um, also, uh, if you go to edit preferences, one other thing that I forgot to mention, I think is under color, not color, uh, uh, user interface, that should do it. You have artboard background. So I think it's pretty bright by default. I forget what it is, probably somewhere around the middle but I like to have a little darker color and um, that is how you change the background of your artboards. And uh, yeah, so let's just, let's just put something in here so we know, so we know what's what. I'll go to my, my drawings. Actually, uh, let's go to the notes layer and select the, the brush tool. Just so we know what's what, we'll call this one and this one we'll call this two and this one we'll call it three. I mean, we could go into our drawings and you could see nice thing. I put my notes down. I got it blue. I go to my drawings. I have the, the color that I want and I didn't even have to come in here because we set up that effect to have the color overlay. So now it's just a matter of exporting control alt shift S or file export and uh, pdf i got this set to digital small file sizes give you a good document for uh, emailing you can see well we don't have much in here but it's a very small document and uh, preview when complete is always a good thing and we'll hit export we'll call this one test uh, two and it doesn't really matter hit save and you'll see it should pop up in in your um, browser Let's make this a little bit smaller or whatever your your uh, current PDF viewer is. And uh, can I zoom out here? Okay, good. Uh, so you'll see 
it, it was important that we went artboard one, two, and three, because when we look at this thing here, you'll see that this is the way that it arranges your PDF. And that's pretty much it. Now all you have to do is draw stuff in here and uh, you got yourself a nice artboard template to work fast and efficiently.